Hello, everyone. It's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Last month, the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge uh, finished. And uh, as most of you guys are probably familiar with it, this is a event that's been run almost every two years since about 1987. And it runs from Darwin, Australia to Adelaide, Australia. And it runs through the, uh, the middle of the outback here. And it is mainly a... Uh, event that's run and uh, comp competed by undergraduates from various universities across the world, uh, University of Michigan, and I think another um, another American university went over there as well. Let's see. Let's look at their teams. Um, but yeah, so here we go. We got University of Michigan, uh, Brunel from the Netherlands, Top Dutch, Sonnenwagen, Inopus. Adelaide, Tokai University from Japan, Timero. So anyway, a lot of these, um, uh, a lot of undergraduate engineering programs from across the world compete here. And it's kind of the premier solar car uh, racing uh, event in the world. And just as a little bit of a background, many of you guys probably remember, um, I certainly do, if you're old enough, you remember, and you were interested in this kind of stuff when you were younger. In 1987, that was the very first uh, World Solar Challenge. And the GM Sun Racer won the event at an average speed of 41 miles per hour. And this is what it looked like. It weighed about 390 pounds. And I think it generated about 1,500 watts, which is about double the... Um, the wattage that the Aptera will produce at peak. So at peak, this because it has a lot more surface area, and this one basically ran on um, completely on solar. You couldn't charge it from the outside. This one had a uh, coefficient of drag of 0.125, which is very similar to 0.13 Aptera's um, coefficient of drag. And interestingly, it was. Uh, Formed, it was built in conjunction with Aero Environment, which is a defense contractor that does unmanned uh, aerial vehicles. But if you look at this, it looks very, very aerodynamic. And I think it loses its, some aerodynamics because so much of its wheels are exposed. And these exposed wheels really uh, affect the aerodynamic drag of the machine. This year, what's interesting is is there are a couple of different uh, classes and originally it was the everything was the challenger class this is one um one driver so it doesn't need any passengers and you can have three or four wheels and it only runs on solar energy and that's what the world solar challenge was um, this was what it was essentially for most of its history in 2013 they introduced this cruiser class. And this is kind of what's more interesting to us as Aptera fans is the cruiser class, basically they're trying to make a practical solar electric vehicle. And so what they're doing is they are saying that it has to have at least four wheels. So that's just their um, design parameter. You have to have at least two passengers and you can use solar energy and an external recharge. Now, the winner of... The winner of the cruiser class this year was from University of New South Wales, and it was a car called the Sun Swift 7. So it has a, a lot of similarities with the Aptera, and uh, here's like a time lapse of them building it. So the, uh, the body is a carbon fiber monocoque, and then it has, it, you can tell they're wrapping the vehicle. And this car has a coefficient of drag of 0 0.095, which is surprising because if you look at the vehicle, here, here's what it looks like. It looks like it should be less aerodynamic than the Sun Racer. But what you'll notice is that the wheels are almost completely covered in the front and the back. And if you look at the design of this thing, um, if you look here, it looks a lot like the Aptera in that it, it comes down to a little point in the back. And you can see if they just stuck the, the wheel in the center here, it would 
look a lot like the Aptera. You can make it more Aptera shaped. And they covered the front wheels without putting them out on those outriggers uh, re and requiring the wheel covers. And I don't know how they dealt with the front wheels turning, but uh, if you guys remember from my interview with the creator of the Aero Civic, he had a pretty ingenious idea where basically the wheels, the front wheels only need to move a lot when uh, you're parking or doing low speed maneuvers. In high speed maneuvers, you're not going to turn the wheel very much. Uh, you're only very subtly turning the wheels. And what he did, he had little rollers and these little wheel covers could kind of flare out during low speed maneuvers and parking. But during high speed maneuvers, it would cover the wheels and uh, get rid of the aerodynamic uh, drag. And so you can see by covering those wheels, they achieve a, uh, a coefficient of drag that's significantly less than the Sun Racer, even though from initial view, you would think that this is much more aerodynamic than this. And anyways, there this car's uh, specs, I'll tell you, um, well, so a couple of months ago, they basically drove uh, 621 miles or 1,000 kilometers in less than 12 hours on a single charge. Their specs are, they their car weighs 500 kilograms, which is about half the weight of the Aptera. Aptera will weigh about a thousand kilograms. Their coefficient of drag again is 0.095, which is significantly better than Aptera's of 0.13. And their efficiency is what's most impressive. They have a 38 kilowatt hour battery and that will allow them to go about 950 miles. So almost a thousand miles of range on a 38 kilowatt hour battery pack. That is compared to Aptera, who that has a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack in the launch edition, will go about 400 miles. So many people have uh, doubted the uh, the coefficient of drag numbers of the Aptera, as well as its range and efficiency numbers, because they think that those are un unattainable numbers. But you can s see that this vehicle has almost three times the efficiency of the Aptera. And so the Aptera is efficient and the tow efficient of drag is significantly better. Um, so it is a more aerodynamic vehicle and it's half the weight and it achieves almost three times the efficiency of the Aptera. So the Aptera's efficiency numbers look like well within reach when you look, when you think about um, in comparison with the SunSwift 7. Now the SunSwift 7 obviously doesn't have like any HVAC system. It doesn't have any airbags. It doesn't have any anti-lock brakes. It basically you know is a stripped down vehicle that just goes and has a battery and a solar panel and some um uh some steering controls but it doesn't have any creature comforts at all so it's not really uh a fully practical car but as you can see it achieves 25 miles per kilowatt hour rather than aptera's 10 miles per kilowatt hour because of its lighter weight and improve aerodynamic efficiency. But as you saw from that cockpit picture, um, it's a stripped down vehicle. So anyways, this, this gives me more confidence in Aptera's numbers. Now Aptera has not released their coefficient of drag from their Pinifarina uh, wind tunnel test, and they haven't released any um, efficiency numbers from any of their test vehicles, the Alpha, Beta, or the Gamma. And I think it's because they, they want to wait for the production intent vehicle, which which will be obviously different than any of their um, previous models. And I think they're waiting for that to release the numbers. And I, I don't know if they should release the numbers from the alpha and the gammas and the betas. Uh, obviously the beta is not aerodynamic, so you couldn't get good efficiency numbers from them. I don't know if it would hurt them or help them to release those numbers depending on uh, how close it is. And many people in the comments and detractors of Aptera have said, well, they haven't ever released those numbers. And that probably tells you those numbers are unrealistic. But just basing it off the SunSwift 7, those are easily obtainable um, efficiency numbers and easily obtainable um, coefficient of drag numbers. So I suspect they're not very far off. And Aptera is just being cautious by not releasing the numbers un until the production intent vehicles are tested, which hopefully will hap we'll, we'll have those numbers by you know mid next year or or earlier hopefully 
All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Tell me what you guys think of the uh, SunSwift 7. I think it is a good example of where Aptera could go in the future for a uh, four or five passenger vehicle. I mean, I think you could retain like basically the Morelli shape of the Aptera, but widen it and enclose the wheels um, like this, like the SunSwift 7 and the Aero Civic were done, enclose the front wheels without having those outrigger wheel covers and then put a central um, third wheel in the back um, under the, the hatch and the cargo area. And that would, again, um, get away from the regulations of having a full, uh, a full automobile, meaning the full automobile uh, regulations which, um, well, maybe at that time, Aptera wants to compete in that space, but if they wanted to stay in the auto cycle space and avoid those regulations and uh, have a ch have a easier way of um, manufacturing and meeting those and not having to meet those regulations, I think they could do it um, by just expanding the current Aptera shape, which is uh, pretty uh, iconic for them. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.